Welcome back. In our last video, we learned how to create our Google Contacts uh, from a spreadsheet, let me pull that up, that we uh, was created through a Google form where our students entered their name and email and other information. And we were able to import it into the contacts. But how are we going to use that, the contact uh, page, to help us with our sharing uh, and collaborating on documents in the classroom. Well, I'm going to let me pull up. I have a, a an assignment. I'm working with students. Happens to be you, uh, and it's using Google Contacts with Google Docs. Uh, I want to be able to share this assignment uh, with the students in my Period One and Period Two class. So I'm going to go to Share on this document, and I'm going to select Invite People. Now this window right here is how I'm able to, to uh, share that. It offers a lot of information. It gives me a chance to invite people and I put their emails in here. And if I had 180 students, I could add each email individually in that uh, field. That would be tedious and unnecessary. I can also uh, see who already has access by clicking on this tab. Right now it's me. And I have advanced permissions which uh, I highly recommend you don't have turned on. So allow editors to invite others to edit or view. Now, I didn't know. I do not want my students to invite other people to be able to edit the documents I assign them. And allow invitations to assignments to be forwarded to documents. No, I don't want that. So I would choose that. But I'm going to also go back to invite people. Now, right here at the bottom, you'll see a link that says Choose From Contacts. What that does is it opens up a window that interacts with the same contacts page that we imported our contacts to. So I click Choose Contacts, and you see this long, narrow, what is called the Contact Picker. Now, I can search for a name, but that's one at a time. That would be tedious unless I just really needed one name. I can choose from my contacts list right here. It has most contacted would show up automatically. And then I have a lot of different contacts here, but right now we're looking for, near the top here, 2009-10 students. So it's a student from my period one and two class, and I'll select that. Now, if I wanted to share with all the students all at once, I would select all They'd all be checked. They'd show up here. I could say done. And there are all their emails typed in. And I could determine if I want them to actually collaborate on a single document, edit. Or I could select view, which means that they can't collaborate, but they could make copies to make their own document and then share that, the finished one back with me. Uh, but let's say I only wanted to share this with just period one. Well, then I'm, let me erase this right now. I'm just going to select all that, delete that. I'll go back to choose from contacts again. And this time I'm going to choose my student. I'm going to go to 2008, let's see, 2009, excuse me, 2010 students. And in my period one, I have my male students. So I know I have Abe Lincoln. I know I have Bill Clinton. Select Bill. And I know I have Dick Nixon, George Bush, Jerry Ford, let's see, Jimmy Carter, John Kennedy, and I think Ronnie Reagan. Okay, so I have my students from my period one class selected. If I never want to do that again, in other words, I have, say, even 180 students, but I, I, I now select one of the periods. I can choose Save as a Group. What would I like to name that group? I'm going to use the same format I used before, 2009-10, period 1. I'm going to say OK. Now, of course, the added advantage is I can say Done, and now I just have my period 1 students in the sharing window. I can then send them an email but now you have to consider the fact that your students are usually sitting right in front of you, at least once a day. And so I don't need to send them an email to tell them there's an assignment waiting for them. If I actually choose Add Without Sending an Invitation, I can add that, and it will give me a notification, that's what I call mom, 
it's reminding me that I'm, you, are you really sure you want to do this? Um, it, it's, going, it's going to ask me, do I really want to do this? Because normally people wouldn't know you shared a document with them. Students, I can just say, check your documents home. It will appear automatically. And so this case, I don't want to send an email. There's no need. I'm just going to share it with them without an invitation. Now, I'm getting, sorry, I cannot be shared because they don't have a Google account. Also, the emails are fake. Uh, you would normally get an OK and it would say, yes, you can go ahead and do this. Now, normally I would be able to look, since I can't show you, these aren't real accounts, but they would, they would, they would have access to this account. What's more important is, let me go back to Google Contacts. And here we go. In Google Contacts, let me refresh this page. Now, this is a web page, so if I made a change to it, and look at that, my 2009-10 period one appears, and here are my period one students showing up in period one, uh, made from the contact picker page, even though in, in it interacted here on my contacts page. So I could actually import all my students, and in the first document I share, assign my groups, and for the rest of the year, with minor changes based on movement between classes, I pretty much have the students I need by name. I hope this helps. Uh, we did this series so you get an understanding of how to use uh, Google Contacts uh, to help share quickly and efficiently uh, with students, even though the emails are unreadable by name. And uh, I, hopefully this will make it easier for you, for you to use this wonderful tool in your classroom.